Good evening. I'm Sean Roman, pinch hitting for Nisa Petrilli. I'm Jay Kaplan. I'm Steve Ferguson. And I'm Anthony Schrein. And this is On the Sports Line for February 5th, 2015. is when the NFL gives its final goodbye and the NBA says hello again. <laughs> is Tom Brady the greatest quarterback of all time? Can the Knicks and the Nets be fixed this season? Will the NBA's current beast of the East and best of the West be there at the end? All that and much more. As always, we want to hear from you. So email us at fanspeak at onthesportslines.com. Send your tweets to at onthesportslines. And your post to facebook.com slash onthesportsline. We just may read them on the show. We're doing it tonight, Sean. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> it had great plays this Super Bowl. Crazy plays, a lot of drama at the end, especially, especially controversy. The New England Patriots came from behind to beat the Seattle Seahawks 28 to 24 in Super Bowl 49. With the win, let the debate begin. Is Tom Brady now the greatest quarterback at, of all time? Guys, what say you? You know what? I'm gonna pick, I want to bat lead off, and I say yes. How can you not consider Tom Brady the greatest quarterback of all time? Think about this: six Super Bowl appearances, four victories. He's two one in a million catches away from going perfect six and zero undefeated in the Super Bowls. And leading, and let me ask you: Have you ever seen a quarterback go this much scrutiny before the no. game? No. No. Between Deflate Gate <laughs> and Spy Gate, everybody from Bill Nye to even his childhood idol Joe Montana mm -hmm. had an opinion. Yeah. Come on, Anthony, he was winning with deflated balls mm -hmm. half the time. <laughs> yeah, but come on, you question the man's integrity. Yeah. You're calling him basically a cheater without indirectly calling him a cheater. And all Tom Brady does is he's the biggest four-quarter comeback in Super Bowl history against statistically. The best defensive unit the last three seasons in the mm -hmm. National Football League. His final Super Bowl numbers, 37 of 50, 328 yards, four touchdowns, all Super Bowl records mm -hmm. against the vaunted Legion of Boom. Mm -hmm. They went bust pretty much. That's right. Yeah. His final two, this is the, his final numbers on those two drives. His final drives, 13 of 15, 124 yards, the two touchdowns, eight for eight. On that final drive. On that drive. final drive. Yep. Touchdown to Julian Edelman. He joins Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw as the only quarterback to win four Super Bowls. He owns the, the record for all-time Super Bowl touchdowns with mm -hmm. 12. 13. 13. 13. 13. Oh, thank you. That's Montana. Even, even better than I predicted. Mm -hmm. He's the only Strong player. Strong arguments, yeah. Anthony. And he's also the only yeah. player of all those three quarterbacks who's never played with any elite wide receivers outside of Randy Moss. That's right. He's 37 years old. He's got a lot of football left. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, what do you got? Well, I say no, because when you look at Tom Brady, first of all, he gets the most protection of any quarterback I have ever <laughs> seen in my life. And you could have Ironside back there behind New England's offensive line, and he'd make, they'd make him look good. Secondly, when you look at Montana and the career this guy had, the ability to throw on the run, his accuracy, he had a 127.8 rating as a quarterback in the Super Bowl, which is phenomenal. Terry Bradshaw, for those of you like myself and Jay who mm -hmm. actually remember that he played, yep. he was a great quarterback in great his day. Leader. And great granted, captain. they had a phenomenal mm -hmm. defense. The steel curtain, no question, true. was amazing. But he had the ability to run and make plays and throw, and he was very hard to sack. It reminds me a lot of what Ben Roethlisberger is now. So my answer is no, Brady is not the best, because without that offensive line, I think he'd be toast behind I, that. I'm curious that. to see what you're going to say. Give me a yes or no, and then give me your explanation first. <laughs> well, I, I need to run this by the numbers because you're going to. There's a reason why I got to do it this way. You'll see. Like you said, four Super Bowl rings joins Brady, uh, joins Montana and Bradshaw. Brady, however, is the only one that has run won six conference titles. Those are the two have not. Mm -hmm. Brady and Montana, the only three-time MVPs of the Super Bowl. 
He also, besides the touchdown record, career passing yards record in the mm. Super Bowl. Talk about the 50 attempts he had. He is the only quarterback in Super Bowl hit in playoff history with a winning record when thrown for 50 times. He's 4 and 1. Every other quarterback in history combined is 3 and 27. Zing. There you go. Okay, <laughs> here. Nine game winning drives, including three in the fourth quarter of Super Bowls. No other quarterback has more than six. First quarterback to take a team. They're the first team to come from 10 points down at the end of a third period and come back to win a Super Bowl. Here's the this. If you judge a quarterback on what he does in the postseason, it is hard to argue against Brady being the greatest of all time. Now, yes, the sports fan in me just smacked the journalist in me upside the head for saying that. <laughs> but as Jamie Hopp, who's a guy who follows us on Twitter and yes. Facebook, I, okay. I talk with him a lot. He's the guy who started me thinking along this line. This is what he posted when I said, let the debate now begin. He is the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, yeah, we closest, got an answer. The next closest is Peyton, and even he needs two more Super Bowl victories to surpass Brady. The numbers support the contention? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> a one horrific call by Pete Carroll and a guy backs his uh, way into yeah. the best ever? Thank no, you. I'm yeah. so yeah. sorry. Yeah. And, Thank I'll you. Just say it. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Support the I'll tell contention. you what, it's awesome that he's part of the conversation right now. But yeah. what is the big difference that separates Brady from Roger Staubach, Johnny Unitas, He's won Joe more Montana, titles. Terry Bradshaw. He's won no, more titles. No, no, those other guys didn't leave their pregnant girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest supermodel in history. He's not that great of a guy, Jay. Well, uh, that's true. And, and I'll, I'll tell you this. Best quarterback ever, Otto Graham, if you ever knew what he did. Seven I did. I've heard of him. So. Yes. Oh, but we got to move on. Because we, we could talk about on. this all day, but we got basketball to talk about. <laughs> yes, okay. we do. <laughs> How about some basketball right yeah. now? <laughs> Let's start with the locals. Both the Knicks and the Nets are having very disappointing seasons, especially the Knicks. They are headed squarely for the lottery in one of their worst seasons ever, while the Nets are hoping to sneak into that final and eighth spot in a very weak Eastern Conference. So let's start with the Knickerbockers. Jay, what really has to get fixed in the second half to turn them around in a better direction? you got to start the turnaround. For me, you know how they say up the middle is where you got to start in baseball, so it's catcher, <laughs> shortstop, center field. For me, it all starts at the point guard spot, and it's finding consistent point guard play. Now, there's no to me, there's no magic second bullet that's going to fix the Knicks, so they got to use the rest of this season to figure out what where they're going to start developing people for next mm -hmm. year. And to me, it starts at the point guard because if you get don't have a good point guard, it doesn't matter whether Carmelo's on this team or not. Now, if you remember when Phil was running the triangle in Chicago and L.A., he did not have a traditional point guard. Remember. B.J. Armstrong, John Paxson, Steve Kerr, Derek Fisher. These guys were listed as point guards, but they were more spot-up shooters than anything else. Who ran the offense in L.A.? Kobe. Who ran the offense in Chicago? Pippen and Jordan. But here's the thing, and I honestly I think Phil needs to step back from being so entrenched with the, the freaking triangle because yeah. it's becoming passe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got to have a solid mm -hmm. point guard. It doesn't matter what offensive philosophy you're espousing. I don't think any of these three guys qualify. Calderon's been hurt, and even when he's healthy, he's erratic and streaky. Prision is the best defender and maybe the best facilitator, but he's hesitant in offense, doesn't look to drive and either finish the rim or kick out the shooters. Knicks are left playing four and five when he's on the floor. I like Shane Larkin ever since he was at Miami, but I'm sorry, right now all he is is kind of like a change of pace running back. You bring him in with the second unit or with the starters to change tempo, pace, style of play, but he's not a starter. He's a second unit guy. This position needs to be settled as the first order of business. Well, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the center position because ever since we lost Chandler, you can see the difference yeah. in this team, whether we're playing triangle offense or not. You've got to have somebody to play that position. Now, I'm thinking maybe you go after a guy like a Greg Monroe who, who might be available. Uh, you maybe look at a Brendan Haywood as a good backup center, but you've got to get some strength and depth and somebody who can block shots and rebound and score a little bit. And they're really missing that as much as they anything. Are. They haven't had somebody good in that spot. No, in a long I mean Jason time. Smith is is a scorer, but that's pretty much all you're getting at the yep. center spot. Anthony, what's wrong with the Knicks? Me, I'm looking at pretty much. Who do you keep on this team? I mean, <laughs> That's I what the rest of the season's going to be about. Yeah. I saw Carmelo Anthony, or Carmelo Anthony, just lost to release like a 9X phone book. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a couple of players that I have under the microscope. First off, Langston Galloway. I like this kid. He mm -hmm. played in the NBA, NBDL. He was in the summer league. He's averaging 11 points a game since he was called up, mm -hmm. since he signed a couple yep. of 10-day contracts. Played well enough to actually be signed through the rest of the season. He scored 21 points against the Pelicans to end that Long losing streak. Yes. It's going 18 more against Oklahoma City. Done it just last week. Clint Anthony early. 
Another guy. Yeah, they just recalled him. Yes. yes. He's hold. He's banged up. He had he had surgery, knee surgery back on November 18th, so he's in and out of the lineup. He should see more playing time, especially if Carmelo Anthony gets shut down. Mm -hmm. Tim Holloway Jr. You know I like him. Yeah. I, yeah. But he but has you seen a big drop off from first year to second year? He's only shooting 38 percent from the field, 32 percent three pointers. Has struggled defensively still, his defense, and he's even yeah. more on the Microsoft of uh, the microscope with J.R. Smith and Iman Shuffle gone. Mm -hmm. He has to step it up to show Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher. That he is, that he belongs as a key cog in the All right, Brooklyn moving Knicks. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to the <clears throat> Brooklyn Nets. What type of tinkering do they have to do, Steve, to get them to that eighth spot? I think the first thing they need to do is think seriously about giving Kevin Garnett up. I yeah. mean, yeah. he has his time has passed in terms of what he can do for yeah. the Nets. His bark is really much better than his bite these mm -hmm. days if you look at the way he plays. You might be able to trade him to a contender and get some draft picks. And, and the Nets definitely need draft picks because... Do you think there are any takers? Uh, maybe a contender you, you might, would be interesting. A contender who's looking yeah. for some Who locker needs, room leadership and yeah. some spot at the four of the five. Like the Kings? Possibly. Maybe. Somebody who could yeah, mention somebody like Cousins. that might be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, Anthony! For me, it's basically find an offensive philosophy that works. Yep. How about that? Hmm. When you watch the Brooklyn Nets, they're, first off, the 24th in, in, in offense, mm -hmm. 99 points per possession. That's per number one. possessions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. per possessions. They're shooting, they shot in a 27% for the month of January when they lost 11 of their last th uh, the 13 games, including all of their home games. When you watch the Brooklyn Nets, they're so inconsistent on offense. One possession, they're, they're moving the ball around, they're, it's free-flowing, it's fluid, they get open looks. The next possession down fell, isolation, broken screen of all plays, yep. throwing up bad mid-range jump mm -hmm. shots. Joe Johnson called out the team early this season for being selfish. As he should. Wow. As he should. That's good. They mm. get to the foul line, but they're, only, they're 24 for free throws and free throws attempts. That's number one. Not nice also, to refuse charity. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, then the, and then a lot of the next pick and roll plays are very predictable. The bigs, Kevin Garnett, he spots up. Mm -hmm. Mason Plumlee, he drives. Mm -hmm. Brooke Lopez, depending if Jerry Jack or Darren Williams is on, he fills By the way, Jerry Jack, Four midway jump or midway jump shots since he's been a starter. He averages that all them screen and mm -hmm. rolls. Mm -hmm. There's no fluidity and no continuity all on offense. All right, Anthony, we got to move to Jay. So here's I happen to agree with you. Here's the thing: the Nets are one one game in the loss column out of the eighth spot, and I think they have a shot at it. But here's the fix: talk about Garnett. That's fine. Yeah. They got to get rid of Deron Williams. Okay, mm -hmm. he has not realized that he is not the alpha mm. dog anymore. His skill set is greatly diminished. Granted, yeah. as due to a lot of injuries, injuries. over the last yes. two yeah. three years. But the point is, he can't act like he's the 28, 20 and eight guy all star point guard he used to be because. The offense can no longer revolve around him with him pounding the rock, looking for his shot instead of setting up his teammates. Yeah. Talk about Jared Jack. This is a pass-first point guard. When he is on the floor, he the is. ball moves. He looks to get his teammates involved in places where they're comfortable, where they like to shoot the ball from. There's more rhythm and flow when the Nets are in the half court. You talk about their pick and roll. Night and day with, with Jack and Williams oh, yeah. running it. Here's the thing. Lo he understands that Lopez and Johnson are the primary offensive options. That point guard is no longer Deron Williams. He does not fit what the Nets are actually trying to move into. Now, granted, Jared Jack is not a 40-minute-a-game point guard, so if you're going to dump Williams, you would like to get a backup point guard back in the trade with him. But ideally, they have got to get rid of Deron Williams because, I'm sorry, they're not going to recognize uh, get that to that new offensive philosophy yeah. until they don't have two different ones two playing different around. Styles. It is now time to go around the NBA <laughs> as we head into the All-Star break. The Atlanta Hawks are the absolute beasts of the East. The Golden State Warriors are the best in the West, and they own the top two records in the NBA. Will both teams be there at the very end? Our guys will weigh in on that, and what team may surprise us in the second half? We're going to begin with the Hawks. Steve, will they still be atop the East come playoff time? I'd say surprisingly, yes, they will, because when you look at the Hawks, and by the way, they were all named Player of the Week. And Stealing my number one line, well, Steve! Well, you know what? <laughs> it's so rare that, that I get It's never this. happened before. It's never First happened before. First time in NBA history. And when you look at their team, I mean, it's not that they have a great team individually, but collectively, this team knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They pass the ball first. They play great defense. They have shooters. They have Corver, Teague, Horford, Millsap. These guys all mesh well together, mm -hmm. and I think their best asset is probably their head coach, yep. Mike Budenholzer. 
This guy has brought in the San Antonio system to Atlanta. He's stealing all my material. And they're <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> but they're clicking. You can make a few other things. Can, yeah. But they're definitely He's clicking. Some sense. I, I think they really are good this year. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Anthony. <laughs> you know what? This team reminds me of the 2005, 2006 Detroit Pistons. A lot of similarities in terms mm. of sharing and unselfishness. But when you look at the Atlanta Hawks, they're going to be on the top spot because every other team underneath them has issues. Mm -hmm. The Chicago Bulls suddenly forgot how to play defense. Yeah, yes. Yes. which is pissing uh, Tom like, Thibodeau all the way. They're giving up 100 points a game. They're 19 for defensive efficiency. Mm -hmm. The Cavaliers is one eleven straight, but you got so many new guys. You got a head coach in David Black that's on the chopping block, and Kevin Love is struggling all mm -hmm. of a sudden. Yeah, he is. Too many question marks still. Toronto, I don't, you can't really take them seriously. As seriously a young team as a mm -hmm. contender. They have problems holding on to late leads late in games. They go off to slow starts. That's true. Washington mm. is playing 500 in the last 20 games. They're 89 the month of January. And we, are we going to talk about the bomb in no. the Eastern Conference? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that 19 game winning streak, I think, gave Atlanta enough cushion that if they go into a midseason slump, they'll, they'll have enough. Fine. They'll, they'll still be still fine. Be and, yeah, and, and, and I will tell you why. You talk about Budenholzer. He, yeah. was, he has been named Eastern Conference Coach of the Month for the last two months in a row. Wow. Undefeated in January, as you said, 17. Good. The reason it is, and they, the, the things that they did in January are highlighted, but they've been doing this all year, and they are very San Antonio-like. They are. They shot 61% in the paint. That's no surprise, and you got inside guys like Hofford and Millsap. They shot 44% on the on the corner three, which is the big outside shot in the NBA. Again, no surprise me, you have the NBA's best three-point shooter in Kyle, Kyle Korver, Korver, who shot a ridiculous 56% from threes in January. Ridiculously yes. good. Ball movement, a staple of the yes. San Antonio philosophy. They lead the NBA in field goals that were assisted on it's almost 70%. Jeff Teague assisted on almost 42% wow. of those field goals. Horford and Millsap were 50% of the assists from Teague, and they shot 55 and 56 percent respectively on shot attempts where Teague was the assist guy, they averaged eight points a game. They played excellent defense, only 97 points per 100 possessions. The only team that was even close, Golden State, surprisingly enough. Mm. And the Hawks also only allowed 31 percent to uh, shoot from five to nine feet of the basket. That's ridiculous. Wow. Stayed out of foul trouble. I'm not saying they're going to play at this level for the entire season, but these guys are playing well together. They got depth. Their top four bench players are all averaging better than 13 minutes a game. So here's the thing. Yeah. Just like San Antonio, Budenholzer is not taxing his starters with a lot of minutes. No. Nobody plays 35 minutes a game on this team, so I think they will be fresh come playoff time. He's brought San Antonio East to Atlanta, yes. and it's working. And it's working. Right. We got to turn to the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Will they still be atop the West? Well done, Sean. Yes. yes. <laughs> Anthony? I want to say no to O's. Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah, you, you got to give them some dudes. They're on an eight game one. winning streak, and they won last night. 12 of their last 13 games, they have won. They sit just three games out of the top spot. Despite everything Golden State has done, Memphis is a striking distance. The tops in the league in defense and efficiency. Zach Randolph back in the lineup. They're 33 7 with him. Mm. And he leads the mm. team in rebounds with 12. It looks like he don't even leave, leave off the ground half the time. <laughs> he does. Barely does. Marcus saw <laughs> a spell, a spell ahead in this offense. 18 points a game, 8.2 rebounds a game. And I like their balance, their balance offense. You got Mike Conley, Jeff Green, Courtney Lee. They Conley will, is a yeah, very Conley, underrated. Yes. Very point underrated. Guard. And yeah. by the way, very this much. caller is not getting the surgery. They should have him back uh, for the stretch run. Tony Allen, give him a little bit of a push off mm -hmm. the off Good the bench. Good defensive player. You know, and they play Golden State two more times. Yes, they already do. won it wow. all against the Warriors this season. You know what? The votes to the Western Conference Finals doesn't go to Oracle. It's through the grindhouse, baby. I'll tell you what. I'm going to disagree with you, and I'll give you two words as to why. You got two words to why not. Here's my two words to why. Splash Brothers. Okay, is there a better yeah. deal in the NBA right now no. than Steph Curry and Klay Thompson? They're averaging 46 points a game. Anybody, Steve, you remember the 71-72 Lakers with Goodrich and West both yes, averaging 25 I a do. game? Ooh, Comparison's kind of scary. <laughs> yes, I do. Come on. I do. I know I'm, I know I'm aging him right there, but I know he does. That's okay. Yeah. I know. Clay I do Thompson remember. coming off that 37-point third quarter against the Kings on the 18th of January, shooting 13 of 13. Yeah. He's shooting over 44% from threes. He's developed into one of the deadliest shooters in the NBA. The Warriors are plus 16 when he's on the floor. He has also become their best perimeter defender, something that gets lost in all the talk about his shooting ability. He's become a complete two-way player. He's part of the reason why the Warriors, believe it or not, are number one in def def uh, defensive efficiency in the NBA. Yep. And it also helps when your backcourt mate is a legit MVP candidate. Steph Curry, 
23 point, 24 points, 8 assists, 5 boards, 2 steals. Warriors are plus 18 with them on the floor. Complete game. Get to the rim. Deadly from mid-range. Knocked down 10 threes in that 51-point game on Wednesday night. Wow. Big reason. The Warriors are his team. And completely his team. Steve. You know what? I'm going with the Warriors, too, but for a slightly different reason. When I mean, you look at the bench the Warriors have, the first thing you look at, you look at guys like Harrison Barnes, mm -hmm. Andre Iguodala. Mm -hmm. These guys play defense, and they score enough points. But their key guy, if he stays healthy, is Andrew Bogut. And yeah. when he's healthy, that team really clicks because you have to always guard against him on the low blocks and also his ability to block shots. And then, as you said, the Splash Brothers, when they're on their game, nobody touches the Warriors. Hey, Draymond guys, Green. Quick Draymond pick. Green. I love quick yeah. picks. Who's going to be yeah. the surprise team in the second half? The Oklahoma City Thunder. They've gone from lottery lock to two games out of the lost column in the eighth spot. 21-12 and 12 since Thanksgiving after a 4 12 start. Durant, Westbrook are healthy. Let me ask you this. Westbrook goes for 45 last night, a career high. Wow. Same night, Curry goes for 51. Tell me you guys wouldn't love a one versus eight matchup with those two going head to head. OKC's going to steal the eighth spot. That'd be good. My surprise pick is the New Orleans Pelicans. Anthony Davis, MVP candidate, 24 points a game, 10 and a half rebounds. Six wins in the last eight games, including wins over the Mavericks and the Clippers. Also, I like the uh, supporting cast. Eric mm -hmm. Gordon, Tyree Gevins, Omar Amir Anshik, Ryan Anderson, Drew Holiday, very uh, underrated supporting cast. They're just shrinking. They're like two games out of the Western Conference at 18 mm -hmm. 13 against the West, by the way. Marcus Sonis can't even step up against the weakened Eastern Conference. They're three games under 500 against the East. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Steve. Uh, for me, it's the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, first of all, we all know how Jason Kidd Where left the hell town. Did they come from? And <laughs> nobody liked the fact that he left the way he did. But this team is in sixth place in, in the NBA Eastern Conference. And they're doing this without Jabari Park, who's out the rest of the year yeah, with a torn ACL. That cool. right. And that's pretty amazing. And then you look at Brandon Knight and how much he's improved this year. Yeah. And Larry Sanders, who's had his issues and hasn't played this year. And collectively, this team plays excellent defense. That's something Jason Kidd's definitely brought them. Remember, this team won 15 games last year, and here they are contending for a sixth spot in the NBA Conference. Uh, it, it's, it's really amazing. It, it's amazing when you consider how uh, weak the East is. Mm -hmm. Any team could surprise. You're Jay, right. Your favorite team, 76ers, do you think we'll see some surprises for them in the second half? Uh, the big surprise will be if they actually finish with a better record than the Knicks. Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> Which could happen. It's kind of scary that that the two of the two of the longtime power franchises are going to be basically fighting for the number you one. You know what pick. that music right there means? Do tell. It is time for the three minute warning. Anthony, lead us off. Thank you, Sean. If you told me headed into 2015 that the best team in New York would be the Islanders, you'd probably be laughed out right out of the building. But yes, the long forgotten team with the pending move to Brooklyn, it's in the prime position for a playoff spot, has one of the NHL's biggest surprise stories. Head coach Jack Capriano has a big time center star in John Tavares, a budding first time all star in Goey, wait for it, Havislav Halak, <laughs> and a nice blend of young players with seasoned vets. The Owls have won as many games halfway through this year as they've won all of last season, including three wins against my Rangers, mm -hmm. of course. Our Rangers, <laughs> yes, yes, our Rangers. Rangers. <laughs> the final season at Nassau Coliseum was shaped up to be a memorable one, ju not just because of the year long farewell. How about one last Ranger Islanders playoff series for the road? That'd be nice. Yeah. The franchise that has not, not had a playoff series within two decades, a playoff series within two decades, may finally be on the receiving end of some brings. And I talk about my niece all the time, as she likes to yell, Let's go Islanders! <laughs> <laughs> Pete Carroll, a moment of infamy for the ages. <laughs> my mind raced to an old show watching the final minute of the Super Bowl, the $25,000 pyramid and a category called Things That Taste Bad. <laughs> Brady and his band of Patriots versus the Seattle Legion of Boom. Seattle led 24 to 14 and looked to wrap this baby up. Then they blew the lead and ha but had one last chance to win. Beast Mode was salivating at the one like a hungry wolf to seal the deal. Wait. What horrific drug haze potion did Keith Carroll <laughs> ladle up? Oh no, they didn't run. He forced Wilson to pass into coverage, only to be picked off, leaving everyone sleepless in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Damn those beveled eggs, they smelled <laughs> funky, rotten, and reeking of insanity, leaving Carroll with a WTF moment never to be forgotten. Ooh. 
Everyone who knows me or follows this show knows just how much I love college basketball. To me, March Madness is the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> the only thing that lessens it for me is having to listen to Jim Nance, especially during the Final Four. I've never been fond of Nance or the way he calls a game. Could he be any more vanilla? Gus Johnson, he's not. Herb, I've been overly fond of his partners from Billy Packer to Greg Anthony and most of the ones in between, but that's about to change. This year, I will be treated to the verbal stylings and analysis of Bill Raftery, who is hands down my favorite college hoops broadcaster. The fact that it's taken this long, Raftery is 71. From the chance to call a Final Four is beyond criminal, but that is a rant for another time. For now, I'm gonna revel in the knowledge that I'll get three more games worth of onions. Send it in, big fella, and with a kiss. It's too bad Syracuse won't make the NCAAs this year. I would have loved to have seen them make the Final Four and then take the advice of Sporting News basketball columnist Mike DeCorsi and eschew their traditional 2-3 zone for at least one possession just so I can raft hear Raftery say, Jim Nance, Syracuse goes, man to man. <laughs> the question in boxing is, will there be a fight between Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather? Negotiations are dragging, and this has been the theme for the better part of a decade. I, for one, think Manny should have been much more rigid than he has been in these negotiations. This should be the terms. 50% down the middle, all revenue. That simple. Manny has taken on the greater challenges throughout his career and deserves an equal reward. Floyd Mayweather is a 38-year-old fighter. His history is dominated by easy victories over hand-picked opponents. And no matter how many times people try to tell you about this fight being epic, this is no Hagler Hearns, no Leonard Hearns, or no Duran Leonard. So if they fight, good for them, their advisors, the premium cable <laughs> network. If they don't, all they're doing is leaving money on the table that neither of them needs. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Sean. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> for Jay Kaplan, Steve Ferguson, and Anthony Strait, I am Sean Roman, and thank you so much for spending part of your evening with us. We hope to see you again on February 19th for another exciting edition of On the Sports Lines. And remember, if you want to watch this show again or catch up on any of the ones you may have missed, check us out at youtube.com slash on the sports lines. And look at our blog at on the sports Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. everyone.